My name is Iran. I'm a research fellow of this year's StockNet, Stocknet House program. Uh, I would like to share my research from my program. And I want to say this is a very personal journey of my own since 3D art and StockNet and on-chain art is a huge topic and I'm speaking from a non-developer perspective. Um, I might not be able to dive too closely into the technical details. Um, I am a designer. I studied architecture. So this presentation will be more of a sharing of my own experience, my learnings, and my future visions. If you are a non-tech background and are interested in learning what possible can be built with .NET, um, with 3D art, then great, I will share my journey with you. Um, I studied architecture for my master. At school, our design sensibilities were trained through studios. And each studio has its own purpose, its own scales, and it gets more complex through the semesters. And we also got asked to build physical models, which I was really enjoying. And through those physical models, we develop into our concept model and our concept for the site. And then we'll produce 2D drawings. That's how the process works. I also got some practical experience in the physical reality, physical world and different companies um, doing projects in different scale. And I felt work in big companies are very different from the creative process um, while we were doing at school. So I pivot into more like personal works, which has more freedom. And I really enjoy the process of um, digital design and doing digital fabrication stuff and realize my sort of crazy ideas. And for example, I really uh, like these projects and I really enjoy making 3D models. I, I like to see how like they move through space and also how I can make it like uh, share with more people. I explore like modeling tool like Blender. It can also create some animation and it gives us freedom to do scale in different, uh, design in different scale. So how do I get into uh, blockchain? So while I was building up my more like uh, virtual design modeling skills. I met Arctic in uh, an event um, two years ago. Um, he was a early community member with Axie Infinity, the end of Viking, and he commissioned me to do a gallery for his competition of, to present his uh, animation competition. He wanted a gallery to be built in this central land. And I learned like tremendously through this project. I modeled an offline program, Blender, and published um, in Decentraland. The deployment publishing process was very, very challenging since I have very limited programming experience, but I learned so much from it. And most importantly, I realized how much the medium, medium itself talks, how much the tool have on the implementation of the design. So as you can see in the lab, that's my sketch drawings uh, from the offline model. And then that's the um, realization of the gallery in this central end. If you are interested, you can definitely visit there. Um, as you can see, the uh, the, the coordinates at 85 minus 22. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's a land with like populated different buildings now. It's getting more popular. So yeah, please please go and visit the site. I was very happy to do this project. Yeah, and here uh, I show you a video. You can see like when you go how you go through the building. So this this slot is a thirty two by thirty two meter square site. 
We also designed some animation in this building. It's it's hard to uh, picture this kind of building existing in reality. So I'm very satisfied with it. Like you can explore different corners of the building, um, sort of ignore the gra gravity, and yeah. And this is the large space presenting the some animation work. And we also designed different locations to presenting the top three work of the, his competition. For example, the top one would be like the most obvious place, and then top two, top three, like also at different location. Yeah, the top two is at the wing place. And you can also climb to the top of the tower where there is like an eye shaped structure. Like, as you can see, this is a very populated area in the central land. And it's getting more uh, crowded. Yeah, I was very proud of those winners. I think they are also happy to see their work can be presented this way. So now let's talk about on-chain art, or we say on-chain NFT. Um, before that, I wanna give a like small like art history. So the modern in modern art history, new art movements follows two elements the introduction of new technology and the recognition of individual human rights. Every like huge art movement always have these two elements. And the idea of modernism can be traced back to Renaissance when humanity, humanism cultural movement was introduced. And this, uh, what you're seeing here is the first NFT. So NFT means tokens that we can use to present ownership of the unique items, non-fungible token. The word was first proposed in 2017 by Ethereum GitHub. And it renamed actually past several asset projects following the launch of more projects that year, including CryptoKitties, CryptoPunk in 2017. So this is the first NFT. Its name is Quantum, it's actually a GIF. So I'm just, it's just a screenshot of, of the, the, the animation. It has like more dynamic, more colors into it. Uh, it, it ran like 1.4 million with fees at, at the Susa base auction in 2021, like last year. The auction house described the token as a seismic genesis work comparable to Picasso's work and uh, uh, Malevich's black script, which are those two work. So I want to talk more about uh, Malevich, this black square work. So before him, the subject of art was always, always within the canvas. So Malevich's black square and the way it was presented, as you can see on the right, challenged people's view of the space we physically live in. So on-chain native art also challenges people's view on aspects of not just space, but also time and human activities because of the nature of like blockchain. So we accept the data can shared with everyone and are stored permanent, permanently and with the hope of reaching out to other culture, cultures in the far away future. So the median itself tells, the median itself is already the language. If it's native, uh, on-chain based art, 
it, it will just have changed people's perspective. I will show you some examples. So on chair 3D art is still at its very early stage. So uh, as you can see here, uh, Guilty Girls are earlier, earlier uh, last year, took two axes that, that we modeled and put them on StartNet. So what he did was store the data on chain. Um, so how he did it was a blender file can be exported to the GITL format. It's a format that stores 3D model information in JSON, and it's a standard format for 3D scenes and models. It's why used in game engine and view. You see, he can either store the raw data, but he wants to, people to be able to use the model to, for example, change, reuse, remodel the existing ones, manipulate, for example, change the skin color, texture, you know, I will reshape them a little bit. So he, he designed the uh, data structure using the struct function to host the data and store the data in smart contracts. So people has already, uh, access to the original data. So, so people can download and use it. That's how he write it using Cairo. And other more other mature projects, they are already like ongoing. For example, this one, uh, Meta Mondu. It's a 3D asset marketplace built on Polygon. Um, I imagine uh, StartNet is more long-term long promising, and I envision in the near future, the idea would be uh, also realized on StartNet uh, with more on-chain solution. And this example, I thought is very, very, very interesting. This is called Terraforms by Mass Castles. As you can see on the left, it's a, it seems a 2D image, but it, it's actually the top down, uh, top view of a 3, 3D terrarium. So, uh, and here, the, the castle-like uh, 3D form with black, black background, that's the whole uh, 11,000 pieces, which would um, um, like organize together this 3D shape. But actually this shape doesn't exist anywhere. Uh, I believe it's uh, off chain or like online rendering of the actual castle, but actually it doesn't exist. But uh, what exists is the data of each piece. Um, and the data encoded their location, their size, and how they look. It's all in on smart contract. It stores the coordinate information. Um, so it's, it's an in invisible, like 20 layer hyper castle shape structure. And in, uh, to add a more complexity in this project, each item has three modes, Terran, Daydream, and Terraform modes. But in Terran mode, it shows animation. User can interact with it, which means they can draw on the top of it and then change the shape, um, you know, write words on it. And um, uh, in Terraform mode, it commits the drawing back to the blockchain so others can access and to view it. So the, this data reach on chain maximalism of the piece attracts, uh, as you can imagine, like hardcore software developers. Developers has built a already a variety of art artistic and practical software application based on it. So this is a perfect example to showing what on-chain native art, creative art can do. It definitely it was definitely like different from original art as we like um, assume like in the past. It has great potential. And as you can see here, this project, they have a both visible and invisible layer, which I found is very interesting. And also like, even though it is invisible in, in the sense, but also it is there because the, all the information were there. I found it, 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 it's very, very, has great potential. So I have more projects, uh, ongoing projects, and I want to make them on chain. It's very challenging. I imagine others uh, in the future, other 
either designers or game developers can have access to them and uh, like constantly create character or stories um, based on the 3D assets. Uh, it's so that the, the on-chain native art is also very suitable for procedural generation art and uh, for 3D uh, gener generated art, I want them to have more applications. So to summary, in blockchain, because of the nature of the medium, developers have a great advantage in navigating platform and creating works. As in the past, authorities with great resources, for example, they will hire artists to paint or later artists who own the on the materials to create art. But now it seems the tour favors people, two categories, either developers who have artistic sensibilities or artists who genuinely see the potential of the medium itself, see the potential of blockchain as a creative medium. So either way, we see both possibilities emerging. Um, thank you so much. So that's all my presentation.